Hi there, and welcome back. Today I'm going to have a look at one of my go-to tools when modeling an alias. It's the CV transform tool, which you can find here under the transform tab. And this is the one. Now it's a tool that you can use on CVs, but also in holes and edge loops. And you can use it on curves and also on surfaces. So let me give you a little example of what it can do. Let me just bring in here one curve. And let's turn on the CV number there. Now, if I want to move this CV here, I have the options of going and using the move tool, which gives us the movement. But this is, let's say, pretty crude in my opinion. Well, the CV move tool, I go work with the CV option here on the move tab. I can control when I hold down the space bar, this marking menu comes up. And you can also choose your mouse sensitivity here. You can also choose a lock in which direction you want to lock the movement and you can turn up the sensitivity. This I find very useful especially when you're trying to do a very minute uh, change in your CV position. Let's say take this one, take the move tool and I'll use it in the XYZ direction. And you see now I'm pulling it up it moves ever so slightly based on that sensitivity. If I go down to one, it's just like in the move tool. So this is more like a factor which divides your motion there. It's very useful. You can also work with a slide function. So you can slide the CV in, in on the direction of the hole. So you've got these two arrows and that shows you how it's gonna slide. Let's turn up the sensitivity so I can slide it this way, that way. If I were to take now a surface, turn on the CVs on this, you will see that a CV on a surface has four directions, so that means you have four arrows. You can do the same thing also when doing some modeling on the subdiv side of things so that will allow you to slide a CV in all the directions in all the whole lines of a sub D model so let's jump back into that now we can have also projected motion here which means that let's say if I take the CV now I can move it move the curve snap options based on whichever line I want to. So let's do that there. And I haven't used it in a while, so get rusty there. You can take that direction there. You can push this other one. And now you can put this one here, where it snaps it to a line. We can also take the parallel one. So here you can take whichever direction you want. So you pick your CV, take the parallel motion, and then you're going to pick your line to which you want to move it. This is very helpful when you're trying to align some difficult corner blends. I'll give you a quick example here. I'll do one radius here. Let's turn up the size so it's easier to see. Got a big radius here. We've got here a smaller one. And now we'll do the last one. I'll do this. I'll 
this. So, a quick way to get this corner done is using the corner blend tool. So I'll take a couple of corners and let's make it a bit more difficult. Let's go let it go around this way. And now you see that it's not perfect. And in this case, it's a pretty good layout considering. Sometimes this tool throws you off and pushes some CVs and more, let's see, in less controlled topologies, it would push your CVs in all directions. But even here, you can see this flow of CVs could be better. So let's delete the locators. I'm going to kill the history on this. And I am going to convert these so I get here a natural edge and it's a lot easier to align here. So let's do that. And now you'll see what we can do here. So this CV, I'd like to slide it on that curve to this line looks okay. Pull it back, I'll get myself a guideline. Basically just one straight line, because I would like these CVs to line up to that pole there. So I'll slide this one back with this. This other one I'm going to slide back with just a simple sliding option. That's already cleaning it up. Let's do one more. this parallel to this here. If we slide that collinear or parallel to this one, then we know that we will have a tension connection here. This one we can do the same way. And we can do a nice little check here. Put tangent there, tangent there, tangent there, and tangent there. These we don't need. Already clean this up nicely. We can go ahead and do this. And these steps, normally you wouldn't do it in a sketch modeling phase. It's really in a phase where your model is pretty mature and you just want more quality in. So let's push these. I wouldn't call it A class, but let's say it's bringing in high quality into your surfaces. Okay. This one, I'll slide it according to this one. And this here, according to that. If we were to put it this way, you can see our tangent connection is breaking. Now I'll take the parallel one again, and I'll hit this line here. option and you can see it's projecting that line the continuation and we've got tangent again so have a play with this and you can explore the power of this tool here now another one that I like is the NUV motion that means it moves your CV normal to the surface so let's say if we were to pick this point here, it's going to move it normal to the surface. So let's see what this normal means. See, it goes towards the surface and away from it. But it does it on a point that's perpendicular onto that surface. 
So that's to the normal motion. Okay. What else do we have here? So we've got in the view. This is useful, let's say, when we have a. Let's jump these up a little bit. So if I want in this particular view, these to line up on a curve, then what I would do, I would turn off the shading, use the view, and what this does is the left mouse button moves across, so from left to right on the screen, and the right and small and right mouse button up and down. So I use the left one, and it brings me here. The right one, bring it down. Uh, that way. The middle button, the middle mouse button, sorry, is the one that's moving from left to right. The right button up and down, and the left button is moving it arbitrarily in your space. So. Let's do that again. This is very useful when you're trying to get a curve that's not that straight line. When you're trying to make it sit on one plane, but in a very, very quick manner. So, for example, if I take that curve, turn up the CV count here, 35, let's move this up out okay so we have a curve which is far away from perfect i'm bringing one straight line because i would like to find an area a place where it looks like it's sitting more it would let's say the average would look like it's sitting on that on a certain plane it means that i'm looking down that line and in this view, down that line, we have one plane. So I can take this CV now, move it in the view. So let's move this one up. Down, up again. I move this side. Let's see. And again. I can squeeze the view. So we can just ever so slightly. It's easier to approximate when we're on that so called plane. Zoom in and again. Let's turn the sensitivity up. Gentle nudges, the pressure in that direction. Done. Done. And done. Now let's unsqueeze the view. So it looks like it's almost sitting on one, one of that lines, one of those planes. So what we can do is to see how close we got. Let's take that, let's do a draft on it. Re edit it. Make it based on the view. And I'll make it double sided with a single surface. Okay, now let's do that. Expand this. And now we can measure curved surface. That is a pretty decent approximation. If I, were, if I would want this to sit on that plane, what I would have to do is find the view, do the draft, and then project it. I would say normal to the surface. And I would go click on set instead of curves or surface curves. I would jump between curve fit and match original. Match original matches your number of CVs and the flow of them. Curve fit would approximate it with less CVs. You can also 
turn up the CV count there. It's up to you and the requirements of the model. I'll go with match original. Let's see how this one is doing. The curvature comb on it. And let's see what a baby curve fit one would do. Similar. Not the same. This one's cleaner. Even though it's got that inflection, it's cleaner that way and it's cleaner this way. But as I said, it's up to why do you it's up to the intended usage. But what you see here, it also generates a clean and nice CV flow compared to the jumbled up one. So might be better to get into the curve fit one if you know that your initial curve wasn't the cleanest. Okay, so we've got those examples in. Let's go back to the transform tool again. See what we've got. So we looked at the parallel motion, the view motion, XYZ, sliding along the holes, and the projected ones. Now, I also like using the proportional modifier, and that does all of the motions I just explained, but you can choose your influence there so the strongly influence zero meaning you move everything without any without any uh, fall off and you can link these two if you need them and you can turn up the degree I normally use one most of the situations though it all depends on what you want to achieve so let's move this one now in the normal direction, let's take and turn off the high sensitivity, bring it down a little bit so you can see how it's doing it. You see, this one is moving the most. That does the most of the motion relative to its initial position. And the rest follow in smaller increments based on the fallout. And here you see the best example. This is the furthest away from that point. This has the least in motion on it. Okay, and you can do that. Non-proportional scaling. You can non-proportional rotate, move them. I normally use slide, move, and, and normal movement. These are the ones I haven't come across them too, too, too often. So they're not really my go-to areas, but I will definitely try them and see how it can improve my workflow. And this is what I actually recommend you. Jump into Alias, take the tools, try them out, learn by doing, learn by what you see from others and become the best model you can be. If you've liked this video, hit subscribe like it, comment if you have any questions, and stay tuned for more. Thank you for, thank you for tuning in. Take care.